working together for 16 years, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And we were talking the other day about how much our business has changed in that time frame, right? I mean, it's crazy. It used to be really a lot easier, right? <laughs> but the one thing that has not changed in that 16 years, nor do we expect it will ever change, is how the creative process makes you feel, okay? We have cleaned this chart up a little bit for the audience. <laughs> you can plug in a different word for terrible if you want. Um, but basically it starts out, you're so excited, oh my gosh, this is an awesome opportunity. Whether it's a consumer brand, whether it's a B2B brand, whether it's a large brand, a small brand. This is exciting, this is a great opportunity, it's awesome, we're energized, we're on it, right? Then we start to realize, wow, there's a lot going on that I didn't really think about when I thought this was so awesome at first. So it's getting a little bit tricky as we go through the process. And this is where it starts to get terrible. Maybe we have a block, or maybe there's additional information coming in, or maybe the strategy changes, and we're having to deal with that. And then we personalize it. We internal, well, it's not, I'm terrible, I'm a hack. I can't do this anymore. Why, I'm, I'm, I'm being found out, why am I here? So we go through that process, right? And then we start to find a little glimmer of light at the end of the tunnel, however it comes through, if it's an afternoon at Starbucks, or if it's in the shower, or if it's you had a dream and something came to you, or if it's your brainstorming with a partner and, and there's that glimmer that shines. And so then we're thinking, you know, maybe this is gonna be okay. You know, I kind of feel the rhythm coming back. I feel comfortable in the direction we're headed. I'm excited about the it's starting to look okay. And then at the very end of that, okay, somehow magically always turns into awesome again, right? So as marketers, we have to learn to trust that process, right? It starts out awesome. It is going to end awesome if we put the passion behind it that we are trained to have and that we're born with. Uh, and if we also remember that it's not a science, part of it is sure, but there's a lot of art in there and we've got to learn to trust our instincts as well. That's when it turns into awesome. I spend about, as well, I spend about 70% of my time and this is terrible and I'm terrible. Um, we, we stay in that world a lot as we're trying to push through ideas, but when, as Peggy mentioned to, we get to that number five and we're like, hey, there's something happening here. There's an idea. I think I can build on this. What if we do it like this? What if we shoot it this way? What if we say this? But then it just gets to okay. Now it's real easy at that point after coming through three and four to get to number five and go, okay, I got, I got to okay. I saved it. We could probably sell this. We could launch this. We could be fine. But it's the important part is to push through that. I mean, keep on your creative team. Keep pushing back on strategy with the account people. Keep talking it out. And talking through it because what you really want to do is to get to that number six stage where it becomes possible because that's when. That's when. That's why we're here. That's why you know. That's why we got into this business in the first place is for those awesome ideas. So what we want to do. This is our process. Everyone looks a little different, and we have um, different language we use around it internally. But these are really the foundational points of it. We start out, and we as an agency sit with our client, and we uh, listen to the goals that they have set for whatever the assignment is. Whether it's an overarching brand campaign or it's a mini campaign. Or, or it's a social initiative, or it's public relations, whatever the assignment is, what are the goals? Um, then we go through the discovery stage, and in the discovery stage, that's where we talk to people, that's where we look at research, that's where we field research, that's where we look at the competitive landscape. What are they doing, where are they positioned, what products are similar, how is ours better? So we do a lot of due diligence on the front end based on those goals and what we're trying to accomplish. Then. This is what we, this is where the, the strategist comes into play, the creative brief development. At LGA, we're an integrated shop and we collaborate very closely with our creative team. So we don't have the client service staff over here, creative team over here, they never talk, much like the sales and marketing uh, groups. It's, it's very much a collaborative approach. We work together, but the client service team is responsible for developing that brief. And we always make sure that we have buy-in internal influence from the creative team based on the input that everyone heard from the client. And we always get client approval. But at the end of the road, if, if we come back with creative uh, and the, the two teams disagree, uh, client service wants to go in one direction, creative in another direction. Which never happens. 
honestly, uh, never happens. Our filter is, if it is on strategy, creative team wins. Okay, if it is not on strategy, if the work is not on strategy, all bets are off. And we, we go back to the strategy. So, in essence, the strategy, and that's the client service department, always wins. Right, Ty? That's right. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Next, a concept. And this is where Todd and his team take over. Todd is a group creative director, so he has a team under him and working with him to concept against that brief. Then they go into development concept. We're going to talk a little bit and show you some initial concepts for a campaign uh, that, that we developed for North Carolina tourism. Um, then into the development mode, that's when the copy's written, that's when the photography is shot, that's when uh, things really start, well, the photography's not shot, but it's sourced. That's when things really start to come together and the pictures and the words start to come together and frame up the, the communication, whether it's digital, whether it is uh, television, whether it's print, uh, all of the above. And then we take that to the client. Now, you look at this and it looks like, well, we go to the client one time and, and then we're done. Well, we all know that it's an iterative process. So between the setting the goals, we're talking to the client constantly. There are several milestones along the way. I know you have them as well that we show and present to our internal audiences or to the client to make sure that they agree we're on the right track. And we use those as sales opportunities to really start to um, crystallize the vision that the where the creative is headed and, and gain buy in along the way. So we get final approval, then we go to produce. Production is huge, and when we set goals, we look at budgets, and we make sure that the ideas that we generate are going to be able to be executed flawlessly and perfectly for the idea. What we don't want is a big idea that we have to cut production budget to execute. It's better not to have that idea at all. So we think about that from the very front. Plus, you don't want to get the client all excited or, or your internal team's all excited about an idea only to come back with a budget that's three times uh, what you can spend. Um, and then launch. And that's the fun part. We watch everybody be happy with the launch of the game. <laughs> so we're going to move forward a bit. Here's the, the four key areas we're going to focus on today. Not saying they're the most important, but they're the ones that really result in uh, the, the visible work. Okay. So we work, as I said, from a creative brief. The client service team works internally from a brief that we develop based on input from the client and also based on our discovery stage. You remember that discovery phase. So we have about nine questions on our brief, and it's called a brief for a reason. This isn't a ream of paper or a big email with 27 attachments that we shoot over to the creative team. We like one pagers. Front and back's okay, but it's not ideal. We like a simple, simple, concise document. It usually starts out really big, and then it's the client service team's role to really start to peel away and get it down to the core that they need to know because a tight brief is going to give you what? It gives us a starting point. I mean, if you give us a really good creative brief, especially when you start talking about like what's the one thing, the tone and manner, it's going to immediately start to generate ideas. There's not that immediate like, you know, how do I get started with this? A great brief is going to give us a verbiage or an insight or even something for us to start running down the path with. So the tighter the brief, the more freedom the creative team has to create because they know the parameters, they know where the road is, and they can play all in that road. Okay, they don't have to go and get distracted down a lot of other rabbit holes. So in the brief, we want to know what are we trying to accomplish with this particular piece of communications? We also want to identify upfront how are we going to measure that? How will we know if we've succeeded in accomplishing that? To whom are we talking? This is the target audience. Who are they? And we should have learned a lot about this audience, not just demographics, psychographics, where they live, but also what their mindset is, how they feel, how they think in that discovery process. And that's really important. Because what you'll hear us talk a lot about today is the strongest pieces of communications. I don't care what the product is. It can be a commodity product. We've done it with Wallboard. You can do it with tourism pretty easily. But they have to make an emotional connection with the audience. That's what's going to transcend product features and benefits. And that's what we really focus on as a shop. Um, Todd mentioned this. What is the one thing, the single most compelling idea about this product, this service, this brand? that the competition can't own, can't state, and 
that is totally relevant to the audience, most relevant to them and most differentiating to your brand or for your brand or your product or service. So what's that we call the, just the one thing, the single most compelling idea. Um, and then we also offer support points. Because a lot of times we'll work with clients, we do it ourselves, and we'll start thinking about all these features, all these wonderful things about us, and we need to get all that in there. Okay, well that's not the one thing, but there's room for that. That supports the one thing. What ladders up to that single most compelling idea, the proof points. Uh, and just to jump in, sometimes a brief will come back, and there'll be like three, one thing. I'm like, no, 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 it's <laughs> one thing. Those other two need to get moved into a reason to believe, and here's why. But well, what's that one thing that, that sells? So we have to force prioritize. And usually there really is only one thing. It's just a matter of having that fearlessness to embrace it and to own it and to move forward with it. Okay, and that's, that's what it takes. Um, and then this one, I, this is one of my favorite. Actually, this is my favorite. It's tone and manner, personality. How should this communication sound? How should it feel based on what we know about the audience, what we know about the mindset, what we know about the company, what we know about the product? How should it feel? How should it sound? All right, so to show you how this played out recently uh, for North Carolina Tourism, I'm going to talk a little bit about how that came to be. We won the um, Agency of Record assignment in 2011. And North Carolina is a strong brand for tourism. Uh, I think we're 27th in spending, uh, but we are the sixth most visited state in the country. And that tells you a lot. People want to come here, right? Okay, people love North Carolina. We all love North Carolina, right? Um, so, over the years, North Carolina had done a very good job in finding that single most compelling idea, that thing, and it's natural scenic beauty. All right, that's what draws people to North Carolina, and that's great, and it was a platform that had been very successful for North Carolina for 20 plus years, I guess. And, but we were coming into this in 2011, and our charge was to articulate an overarching brand strategy and take into consideration the time, the day, or the now. And we had a lot of research that told us that coming out of the recession, the post-recession consumer, the post-recession visitor, tourist, wanted more out of life, more out of their vacations. Okay, so simple pleasures was nice, but not quite enough. People were looking for more, we worked with bb and people were looking for more with a financial institution coming out of the recession, okay? Different things were important. Some things less important, some things more important. And what we found with tourism, and what was more important was the, the meaningfulness of time spent with family and friends. Mm -hmm. So we went from simple pleasures to making deeper connections. And that was across every aspect of the person's life. But where can you make a deeper connection than when you're spending time with your family 24-7 on a vacation, right? So deeper connections from a tourism standpoint is about finding that next level where visitors more deeply connect to their families, to their friends, to each other, and even inside themselves, okay? Sort of finding themselves. All right, so the line that, this, is a, this isn't copy, this is more, we work um, with clients as part of our due diligence in developing a belief statement. And it's usually three or four paragraphs that states what we believe is a truth about the brand or about the product. This is an abbreviated form of the North Carolina Tourism um, belief statement. With vast, tranquil beaches, miles of tightly clipped fairways, Relaxing mountains, vibrant cities, and hundreds of fun-filled excursions. North Carolina provides an ideal atmosphere to create deeper connections with places, friends, family, and yourself. One of the things about North Carolina that makes it difficult to market as a destination is its diversity. We have the mountains. I mean, it, it's also a really good thing to market. The mountains, we have the urban areas, we have the coast. Different people go to different for different reasons. So it's hard to find that overarching brand for North Carolina tourism. So that's why you see this is an emotional one. You see that wherever you go. And we're gonna talk a lot about how it doesn't just apply necessarily to the beauty of the place, it's deeper than that. <clears throat> so if this brief came, this brief came to the creative team, we saw this idea of deeper connections, 
and it immediately started to sort of generate ideas. What we're actually going to show you is a little bit behind the scenes of the ads. We're going to show you the three concepts that were presented in their sketch forms and then how we built those out. But first, I'm sorry. I no, good. <laughs> oh, this is the, this is the brief, the draft of the brief, my bad. The draft of the brief for North Carolina tourism, we want to accomplish increased visitation. We're going to measure inquiries. We're going to measure visitation. We're going to measure increase in market share against our competitive states, and mostly those are the contiguous states. Our audience, this is more uh, demographically focused. We do have more detail than that, uh, more insight into that audience. But they're upscale women. Women make travel decisions. I mean, they do. That's, that's the... the the uh, naked truth. 3554, in North Carolina, it's interesting because the majority of visitors are not bringing children with them. Now, I don't know where they're going because everywhere I see children, but <laughs> the, core, the core are uh, not necessarily, they're two-person uh, and sometimes multi-generational. Uh, but that's the, the majority. Uh, and then you see the contiguous states that uh, represent our competitive set along with uh, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and New York. One thing is that deeper connections. That's our calling card, that's our mantra throughout this campaign. Believable because of the restful relaxation in a setting of genuine beauty, inclusive of places, yes, but also personality. The people of North Carolina are really, really interesting, uh, warm, uh, talented, accomplished people. Uh, also, culture, history, and activity. So we wanted to make sure that this came, campaign didn't limit to just the beauty of a place, but beauty, it, is redefined in the context of North Carolina. So before we jump ahead, look at this brief real quick. So we, we mentioned earlier that the one thing is going to be important. So when you evaluate this creative, let's think about are we making a deeper connection? Let's look at that tone and manner. You know, the tone and manner of North Carolina isn't cool or edge. You know, we're not looking for those kind of words. These are actually words that feel like North Carolina. When you say genuine, that feels like a North Carolina word. So how is this creative going to feel genuine? Uh, moving. Moving is a word that we like for North Carolina because it allows us to go back and support that deeper connection. So as you see some of these creative concepts emerge and as we work through them, you'll kind of see, hey, does that make, does that, can I make a deeper connection there? Does this feel moving? Does it feel like North Carolina? So at this point, we start the idea process. And, and for, for our team, it's, you know, old school. It's sketches. It's doodles, it's random words and associations on paper, and we start crafting these sketches of concepts. So we meet internally with the, uh, with the account team, and we look at rough pencil sketches, marker comps. And the, the first ad that we went through on this concept, it's, it's, it may be difficult to see here, but you sort of see the mountain range in the background. In the foreground, there is a smashed compass. There's a compass there on the rock with the glasses around it but you see somebody off in the distance. This is kind of that get lost in North Carolina. It was the most literal execution that we did for making a deeper connection. It was like, we're gonna get you so connected that you get off the path and you start to explore North Carolina in a new way. The second concept that we played in, and typically we, we like to do three or four different concepts to see which one generates the most, the most interest and, and meets back up to the strategy. The second one is kind of taking an inanimate object and giving it that personality. So with this one, we had this plastic pail that on its way, think about how that travels to the beach. It travels and it's empty and it's waiting to be used. But once you're there in the sands of North Carolina, it's filled, it's fulfilled, you're full. And so it becomes that metaphor of you waiting to travel, you're empty until you get here and then you leave this memory of being but full of this life. The third one starts to look at the, uh, the allure of North Carolina. There are so many stories about the history and the environment of North Carolina. One thing we learned about was the shadow of the bear. And if you uh, stand at a certain point in Jackson County for six minutes, two times a year, you can see the shadow of the bear. It's a, it's a Native American legend. And if you want to go ahead, this was, the, this was the pencil comp. This was actually the campaign that was selected to move forward with. The actual ad looks like that. It's not retouched. That's actually the shot of the shadow of the bear 
in, in, its, uh, in, its, in its realness. The headline, it's tough to read on here, so I wrote that down just so you can hear the headlines. This, um, it says, so the shadow of the bear. Here, um, only light this captivating could attract such an elusive bear. It's the only place that you're gonna see this is in North Carolina. The Baker ponies out on the Outer Banks, we've all heard of them. Some of us have been lucky to actually see the, the wild horses that runs along the sand dunes. This was the concept for those alluring horses, horses, and that's the actual shot. Those are the wild horses. You can only get so close to them. Um, got this shot of the horses on the sand dunes, and here the headline is, even those with, that run with wild abandon settle here. The third ad in this campaign really focuses on what the vibrant music scene in North Carolina is. Now in our, in our big cities, in our small town, we've got some great emerging artists. So we wanted to focus on that. We just didn't want to show the scenic beauty. We kind of talk, wanted to talk about, about what was happening on the music scene. So in this ad, we shot this in downtown Raleigh, sort of the, the, the four or five piece band playing in downtown Raleigh, the music scene. And here the headline reads, some artists travel the world for inspiration, others don't need to. So that takes you through sort of the, the three concepts that we presented, <coughs> the one that was selected to move forward, but what we were able to do with not only some of that captivating imagery, but some of the tone of the writings really make you have a deeper connection to what was going on, whether it was Shadow of the Bear, or if you've ever seen those wild horses along the coast. Now, if you, if you go back, can you go back two slides? There's a North Carolina logo that's an all type, but then when Peggy forwards one, you see a different logo in the process. While we were working on the ad campaign, we had the ability to redo the North Carolina tourism logo, something that was a little more unique to North Carolina than just a type treatment. So North Carolina is a custom font with an oak leaf that casts the shadow of North Carolina. And we actually have a little video to talk about that process. Um, I mentioned the website, and 
one of the things too, from a content standpoint, everything, we have a content strategy that we work from. Everything is driven uh, from that deeper connections, overarching strategy. We uh, are the voice of nine, on nine social platforms for Visit North Carolina. Uh, but through everything we do, the website is really the, um, the, the big, big mammoth marketing tool for tourism. So it's, it's, it's very evident there with the content there. But also we do, um, I think you mentioned maybe earlier, we do digital and print primarily for tourism from an external traditional standpoint, uh, along with all of the assets around social and the web. So some of the digital you know, were part of this. Yeah, digital campaign that we've done in the past, um, you know, try to drive people to, to visit NC. That's where we want everybody to go. That's where they can interact with our partners and make that deeper connection. Book a weekend at, you know, Biltmore, go down to Mandio. Um, so this is just a sample of some of the digital ads that ran. And, and one thing, when we started to look at the data, you know, we understand that people come here in the spring and they're here in the summer, they're here in the fall to see the flowers. And a lot of times they're here in the winter to do skiing, but there's this kind of gap in April. So like, what can we do to get more people here in April? <laughs> the research for this project was great, by the way. Um, we actually created North Carolina Beer Month. Uh, and this year coming up, um, next year will be our third year doing it. But North Carolina, because of what's happening in Asheville, what's happening here in Charlotte and some other places within the state, it's becoming sort of a mecca for craft beer. So being able to sort of identify a month that we need to up traffic to North Carolina allows us to create something specific like North Carolina Beer Month. Are any of you craft beer fans, or do you know people who are? I mean, it's serious business. Serious business. And, and so when you think about that overarching strategy of deeper connections, what do they do when they get together? Oh my gosh, they're talking another language, and it's craft beer, right? So they're able to connect more deeply with like-minded folks who share their passion for craft beer. So it perpetuates it. Okay, um, what we're going to show you now, this is another video, sorry we kind of put them all at the end, I think, but this is a video that talks about how we, remember I just told you, um, that we uh, like to provide kind of our thinking along the way. So we presented to the North Carolina, all of our tourism partners, the folks who run destination marketing organizations within the state, or Asheville, or Charlotte, or there's several of them, um, Outer Banks, uh, also people who manage or market hotels or Grandfather Mountain, or every, every venue, every destination throughout the state uh, is invited to the Governor's Conference. Uh, and it, it goes from, from place to place each year. And that's where we roll out all of the new marketing opportunities for the coming year. And so at the 2013 conference, I believe it was, it might have been 12, we uh, presented a uh, kind of a sneak peek at the new website. When we took on the business, the website had been around for nine years. It wasn't responsive, it needed a lot of work, uh, it just didn't fit the way people are accessing content today, so we had to revamp it. And this was, it was a big undertaking, and we wanted people to kind of have a sneak peek that it was coming and get excited about it. So this is what we did. When we first launched the current version of VisitNC.com, it was dynamic, robust, and appropriate for the times. The web developers were dancing. Actually, developers don't dance, they drink coffee and code. But since 2009, web use has been moving from the desktop to here, to here, to here, and yes, sadly, to here. And since web usage patterns have evolved, so has the way visitors desire their content. They want things to be seamless, short, more engaging, more relevant, targeted, shareable. Travelers really don't like today, unless they're on a beach with a bucket and a shovel. Used to be five clicks, things were good. Now, if it's not tap, scroll, got it, I'm bored. I'm angry, burning, or worse yet. So come this summer, we will be launching a new visitnc.com. This means the designers and developers have been coding, not dancing. The new website will have responsive design, guaranteeing the experience will be engaging and alluring. Here, here, and here. How cool is that? Restaurants, lodging, events, on-demand listings where travelers demand it. Content available by interest, geography, and inspiration. There will even be third-party ratings to show what inspires others. All of this so travelers can connect more deeply with North Carolina. 
Partners should be excited to hear the new website will have an event widget, allowing you to synchronize visit NC listings with your site. There will also be an API available. The more you engage, the stronger your content can be. Add, update, delete, export, review. You'll have reminders when you forget, error flags when stuff is incorrect. How right is that? We continue to increase our digital marketing spend. We'll be using more display, SEO, SEM, and social. Print, PR, and other efforts will drive visitors to the new site too. We'll be reaching travelers geographically, demographically, contextually, behaviorally, and emotionally. A newly designed VisitNC.com will be exciting. Developers will dance. Partners will dance. The Division of Tourism will dance. Travelers, they will be planning trips to North Carolina. Then they will dance. visits to visitnc.com, but beyond that, downstream traffic. Our partners all are on the site, all of the destinations. So we are measured by how, how many clicks go off our site to their sites. There's no transaction on visitnc.com. You can't make a reservation. You have to easily find what you're looking for and then click to go there. And we look at that data monthly. Uh, and sometimes more frequently if we have a campaign. So that's what we are, are charged with from an overall standpoint, getting people to those destinations so that they can book. And so it makes that site tremendously important to us and the content on it tremendously important. How that impacts creative, and I never thought I would see this day happen, but we do a lot of analysis, the analytics search, uh, all of the data that, that we can uh, analyze, and then we share it with the entire team so that the creative team starts writing headlines differently, right? Because they want to be able to, to uh, get, the, get the individual to the, the site so that they can get to the partner site. So we have uh, team meetings where you got the analytics, you got the creative people in there, and it used to be a little bit like this. No, we're building a brand, we're not worried about the, the traffic. Well, yeah, we kind of are. So we have to merge those two together. And now it's a really good team approach and it's working incredibly well. Our bounce rates off the homepage have plummeted. Uh, visitation is way up, and it's all because of the teams working together. Creative drives the look and feel, but when it comes to language, that's really gonna get, get pe people further along on the journey to their destination, literally. Um, we wanna be able to take advantage of that if we can. Um, that's what we have on the creative development process, and why don't we open up for questions here, and then we've got one more thing to share with you that I hope you'll find as inspiring as, as we do. Any questions? I have a question. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Uh, my question was, on the creative brief, is this something that you all generate, or do you work closely with your client? To generate what that creative brief is? We work closely with the client. I mean, there are some areas that they're going to have more insight than we may have. For example, the reasons to believe, like product differentiators, product attributes, things like that. We dig in around audience to try to really get at the audience. Sometimes they'll have that data, sometimes they won't. It really de depends on the sophistication of the client uh, and their, their data that's available. Uh, but it's a, it's a partnership. We write it, but we have an input session with them and, and we raise these questions in that input session. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Did you have a question? Clients uh, have, have a lot to say about their brand when they want to say it all. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you manage their expectations? You said you get to one, the one thing. That's, that's a long mm -hmm. road away from all the stuff they want to say. Right, how well, you, how you uh, a lot of times it's, it's copy points within the body copy of the ad, we make it hit on two or three of those things. We also look at what's in delivery channels. So are we doing one ad? Will there be three ads that we can break up those reasons to believe in different ways? What's happening on the website? Is the collateral material? Does social offer us an opportunity to kind of hit some of that lower points that they all think is important, but when you know one, no one wants to read an ad, with you know, a page full of copy. So just kind of working with them, it's really an education. You know, a lot of times our clients have been with us for many, many years, and there's a trust part. So they trust us to be able to make, and help them make the right decisions through a lot of that stuff. 
Uh, we found too that you know when you're developing creative and you present the marker sketches and the concepts, um, the one that's focused on that one thing and all of ours, it starts to make them see the power in that. Uh, it's it's hard for them or us or anybody to give up an attribute that we're not sure that may be really important. We think to some people it is, but it's trying to help them understand that if you're not a little uncomfortable, you haven't gone far enough. You know, you, you've got to stake the claim. You've got to be a little bit fearless in your approach with it. And the one thing is going to get more attention than fragmenting your message or your approach to where nobody knows what you stand for, what you are, what it is. Yeah. So we're we're pretty. Um, we take a pretty strong stance on that. We don't always win. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, everything's a bill. Um, so we get that. But but most of the time, we can show examples of how this has worked and and why it's a better. Path. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, when you deal with tourism, you've got many, many customers and satisfied. Did you guys ever get in disagreement? Or did the agency ever say, this is the one I hope they accept, and somewhere along the line, they overrode you? And, or was there complete agreement all the way through? No, there's never complete agreement. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. um, you know, we don't present anything that's not on strategy, and we don't present anything that we couldn't live with them buying. Okay, um, and every now and then they'll ask us to go down a different road, and we try to do that with um, an objective, you know, um, stance. And usually, when you come back and compare it, there's a clear winner. Now, with that, that's from an overarching concept standpoint. When you get into nuances about um, font, or and the font we developed is actually a, a unique font. It's, it's custom, and it's called North Carolina. Um, but when you get into the, you know, well, I, I wish the font were a little bigger, or I wish the logo, or can we include this, or can we do that? Um, that happens, of course, and you just got to pick those, pick those battles. But with tourism, their tourism folks are really savvy marketers, and they, they kind of, um, we probably have less back and forth than we do with some other, some others. But it's natural. I mean, we we know that, and and we just try to be good stewards of the brand and present our best thinking and what we think is. You know, backed by uh, research, not just us, but things that typically work well, best practices. Yeah. Logo being bigger doesn't mean 25%. Logo being bigger can be 1%. You know, <laughs> right. technically it's bigger. You know, what's the right balance? What's the right, right way to sort of get those elements so that it arranges in a nice composition? Different designs. So give them what they want within what you know. Yeah. You try to, yeah. 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 That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Other questions? No? I shouldn't have said you're going to get inspired because now I built it up too much, right? <laughs> All right, how many of you watch Mad Men? Anybody watch Mad Men? All right, so you may have seen this. I'm sorry if you haven't, but if you're like me, you love it and you want to watch it every single day. Um, if you haven't seen Mad Men, agency set in the 1960s, now they're in the 70s. This was a clip from the first season of Mad Men. And what we talk about a lot and what you probably think about a lot too is what are we really selling here? You know, you've heard us talk about making that emotional connection and um, to us, that's just paramount. And so, this is a great clip on how important it is. And the agency, uh, Eastman Kodak, is coming into the agency. You've seen this, haven't you? They're coming into the agency, and uh, they're going to a lot of different agencies for presentations. And um, they're at the Hero Agency right now. And this is how they handle that pitch, okay, for the Eastman Kodak uh, product, which I want to tell you what it is right now. When we first launched the current version of Visit NC.com, it was dynamic. Broke. So, have you figured out a way to work the wheel into it? We know it's hard because wheels aren't really seen as exciting technology, even though they are the original. Well, technology is a glittering lure, but uh, there's the rare occasion when the public can engaged on a level beyond flash, but they have a sentimental bond with the product. My first job, I was in-house at a fur company. This old pro copywriter, Greek named Teddy. And Teddy told me the most important idea in advertising is new. It creates an itch. You simply put your product in there as a kind of calamite look. We also talked about a deeper bond with the product. Nostalgia. It's delicate. But potent. Sweetheart. 
Teddy told me that in Greek, nostalgia literally means the pain of an old wound. It's a twinge in your heart, far more powerful than memory alone. This device isn't a spaceship. It's a time machine. Thank you, Peggy, and thank you, Paul.